Hey guys, welcome to Wrench Drive. What I got here for you is a, a real quick, easy project if you're interested. It's a, uh, a cheap GPS speed logger. So if you want to know how fast your RC car is going, uh, this will tell you. It's a super easy project, guys, and uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of skill. You need a little bit of soldering skill and you need a little bit of coding understanding. Uh, neither of them is, uh, is, a, is a showstopper, guys. If you've never, ever done anything with an Arduino, this is not a terrible project to get started with. It's relatively simple, guys. It's, uh, it's not much more complicated than just a, a real simple blink program that, that makes the LED on the Arduino flash. So, I mean, I think, you, I think if, you, if you can either solder or have a little bit of programming skill, you're probably laughing because you only need to learn one thing. If you don't know any of it, you need to learn, you know, kind of everything. Um, you know, just be patient, guys. If you're interested in building this, just uh, start small, you know, work through some steps. I'm going to give you a quick outline of, of what I would do if I didn't know anything. So, uh, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll be helpful to you. And by all means, guys, if there's something that you're not very savvy on, um, you know, get some help from, uh, from a friend or whatever, guys. It's, uh, this is a pretty simple project, guys. Like if somebody came to me and was trying to get this working, you know, it's, it's a really small amount of time to, to help them out type of thing. So I'm going to throw up a, a circuit diagram so you can see what, uh, what went on into, into building this. Cause obviously I got it kind of crappy packaged up here and, and, uh, you know, you can't really see what's going on, but it's not very complicated guys. And just so you know, this packaging, I just used some cork that I had kicking around because I didn't feel like modeling up a box that would that would hold it nicely. This is just a real quick and dirty. And uh, this is a tip for you guys. Uh, you can you can buy brass standoffs to uh, to lay out your circuit boards, but if you're just prototyping something, just you know whipping up a little project, hot glue works really well, guys. You just uh, hold the boards with your fingers, get them spaced the way you want them, and then just run a bead of hot glue and let it cool. And then you'll have a, a standoff that's keeping the boards from touching each other. It's, uh, it's, it's ugly, guys, but it works, right? So, you know, if you want it to look pretty, some people get real uppity and want everything nice. Well, if you're just trying to test it out and see if it works, quick and dirty works just fine, guys. And uh, this cork, my thinking was cork, you know, it, it absorbs quite a bit of impact. You know, we'll see if it lasts or not. I'm hoping it doesn't fall off the car or get crushed or something because, you know, that, that'll pretty much kill it for sure. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, so anyways, on to the, uh, to the breakdown of how this works. Oh, and by the way, I'm powering it off of the, uh, the balance plug on, uh, on a LiPo. I'm using a 2S here, but, uh, this works just fine off of pretty much any LiPo guys. You just, uh, you connect the ground pin to the, uh, to the black wire end, and then you move over two plugs, plug in the red wire, and that's going to give you 7.4 volts. And uh, for the voltage in on an Arduino, that's just fine. It's going to work. No problem, guys. You can use 3S. Um, I did test it. It works It works fine. To, get, to build this thing, guys, if you don't know how to solder, that's probably the thing that scares people the most would be, would be my guess. If you don't know how to solder, my advice is get yourself the cheapest board you can find that has lots of holes. So you can either use a, a spare Arduino because they're they're pretty cheap, or you can use an, an Arduino shield that has lots of holes in it. And the reason I say lots of holes, you keep hearing me say that, is because what you're gonna do is you're gonna practice soldering, guys. You're gonna use a board as a sacrificial tool to teach yourself how to solder. Now, guys, I'm rusty because I hadn't been soldering for a long, long time, and I got everything in this except the Arduino itself too hot for sure guys and it works just fine so I promise you it's harder to kill things than you think most of the time uh, the GPS board that you're going to use is uh, a little bit electrostatic sensitive so that's one you want to do be careful with uh, where I live in the winter it's super super dry so there's tons of static in the winter but right now in the summer the humidity is high and uh, I mean I haven't killed this thing and I had a couple of projects I used it in before and, and then this one and I mean it's you know if it's it's it may be ESD sensitive but it's clearly not super 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 sensitive and the way you get around uh, damaging stuff guys always handle circuit boards by the edges right don't put your finger on chips that's bad 
handle them by the edges. Keep your fingers on the sides, all good guys. Um, do not let circuit boards touch metal things, especially when it's powered up. But on general principle, guys, avoid metal on metal when you're talking about circuit boards because everything on this is contacts, guys, and stupid things can happen. That's all I can tell you. Just use caution. Don't, you know, don't have metal to metal touching because the one time that you, you're not thinking about it, Things powered up. You don't realize there's actually power to a couple of connections. You know, you touch it with a with a pair of vice grips or something by accident. You know, you got it on your tool bench, and zap, and it's all bad. All it takes is one mistake, guys. Just remember that. And I mean, this stuff, none of this, nothing in this is very expensive, guys. But uh, you know, at some point, you might be playing with something that costs real money. And when it costs real money, you definitely don't want to do something stupid and kill it. It's, it's bad enough when you kill something not doing anything wrong. It's super annoying when it's it's stupidity. All right, so with the soldering, guys, you need a soldering iron. And for this project, you can almost positively get away with a really crappy one. Both the ones I have are nothing spectacular. And, um, I mean, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm out of practice, but I know what I'm doing. So, I mean, that is an advantage. But the main thing you have to remember, guys, heat is the enemy. Um, if the board starts to get discolored, you know, it goes from a nice green or a nice blue to like a dark, you know, burnt looking color. That's not good. You don't want to get it that hot, guys. Uh, if you have a tip that's too big in your soldering iron, what you want to practice is using the smallest surface area you possibly can to touch the pin. There's lots of soldering tutorials out there, guys, on, on YouTube. Check out a couple. You know, watch a little bit, watch guys uh, doing doing what they're doing, and and uh, and then try and do that, guys. It's it's not that it's not that tough. Now, when you first start out, it's going to seem hard. It's good that you're going to go, oh my God, that guy made it look so easy. Well, yeah, that's because it's amazing how easy things get when you practice them a thousand times. I worked in a in a factory making circuit boards years and years ago, guys, and I promise you, I was. I was pretty awesome with a soldering iron back in the day. I'm not even close to that right now. So practice. That is absolutely the most important thing. And that's why you use a cheap circuit board. And, you know, you just solder some wires into place and then desolder some wires. Solder some wires into place, desolder some wires. And you'll get a pretty good idea of when you're getting the hang of it, guys. And the one thing you want to make sure that you are capable of is not accidentally soldering two pins together. It's very easy to do, guys, and that's the one thing you have to look, you have to get get, uh, get the hang of is not getting solder all over the place. You just want to get the solder on the pins that you're soldering. Once you get that down, you're basically fine, guys. So just remember that tip, guys. Just make sure the solder's only going on the pins that you that you actually want it on. Don't bridge anything. Bridging is a short circuit, and bridging is bad, guys. All right, so you're going to need to learn to solder. Get the YouTube fired up. Get yourself a soldering iron. Play around. If you're a kid, don't know what you're doing, um, you know, definitely get a little bit of parental supervision. Uh, back in the day, me and me and everybody I know who knew how to solder taught ourselves. Our parents didn't know how to do it. They didn't know doodly squat. Just remember, soldering iron gets hot. Uh, you you know, you get yourself uh, set up on a surface where the soldering iron isn't going to light anything on fire. Uh, make sure you're you're uh, using some caution. Don't don't touch it. You know, keep your hands uh, keep your hands a safe distance. Uh, wear some glasses so you don't get a uh, splatter in your eye. The odds are very, very small that that'll happen, guys, but it could. Uh, and then uh, just be careful, guys. It's uh, a lot of these days, a lot of people will tell you about breathing gear. Don't breathe in those fumes. Um, by all means, <laughs> you wear a mask. <laughs> uh, all I can tell you guys is uh, I've seen. An awful lot of solder fumes inhaled and uh, nobody's dropped dead yet so uh, you know if you're soldering a little bit from time to time I wouldn't get too worried about it but you know whatever if you're uh, if you're paranoid want to take care of yourself by all means take care of yourself all I can tell you is this guys uh, there's places in the world where the air pollution is uh, worse than whatever you're breathing uh, soldering a couple of parts so uh, yeah anyway get yourself a, a nice uh, 
spot set up, practice your soldering, get your skills down pat, and away you go. Then what you want to want to do is uh, is uh, if you, if you're pretty much no matter what you're doing, guys, get two of each of the components in this if you can at all afford it, guys. And probably the most expensive one is the GPS. Maybe you only get one GPS, but get two displays and two Arduinos. And the reason is um, you want to use one for prototyping and then you're going to want to use the other one when you're building it and you want to save space. Because when you prototype guys, what you're going to do is you're going to put some header pins onto the board and then you're going to be able to easily connect and unconnect wires to get your project up and running. So. I don't have an example here for you guys, sorry, but I'm sure you, you can see it or if you do a little bit of Googling, you'll see a board with pins sticking out of it and you just use some jumper wires to connect those pins to, to pins on, on other boards. And that's how you put together a prototype. Well, when you go to put together something smaller, those pins take up quite a bit of space, guys. And uh, if, if you want if you want to get a nice uh, small form factor in your finished project, you're going to want to you're going to want to solder the wires directly to the holes on the boards and that'll save you lots of space that's why i say get two uh, i actually didn't have two of everything and i had foolishly put pins onto everything and i desoldered the pins and went about my merry business desoldering pins is a pain in the ass guys avoid it if you can that's why it's nice to have two because the ones that you use for prototyping you just use them the next time you're doing a, doing a project the ones that you're using for the finished project you actually put together and I mean that's it that's an expensive way to go when boards cost real money guys there's you know there's plenty of stuff out there that's not super super cheap uh, the most expensive thing in this is the GPS and and you can get one for about 10 bucks so you know that's not a stupid amount of money all right so what you need is a soldering iron a computer because you're going to program this thing you need a either a, a 128 by 32 or a 128 by 64 LCD display, uh, preferably the I2C interface if you want to use uh, the code that I used. You want a Neo 6M GPS, they're super cheap. Uh, basically, if you find a cheap GPS that's not a Neo 6M, uh, by all means, you know, you give her. Uh, I looked around a little bit and uh, other GPSs were quite a bit more money, so uh, I had this one kicking around you know that's the main reason I used it I was more curious to see if there was if there was a better performing one out there because I bought this uh, two three years ago something like that and then you need yourself an Arduino Nano or some other small Arduino an Arduino Pro Mini will work just fine uh, assuming that you know how to program one it doesn't have a USB port so you need to do a little bit more hokey pokey to get it working if you're uncomfortable or a noob just get yourself an Arduino Nano and you'll be good to go because you just hook up a USB cable. It's super easy, guys. Uh, and you're going to need some uh, some jumper wires uh, just to get your prototype up and running. So if you have nothing, you do need to buy a few parts, guys. If you have, uh, if you have some of the basics kicking around or have access to them, uh, life will be a little bit easier. Uh, I would go for the... Uh, when you're getting the wires, I would get two kinds. I would get the kind with the male end and a female end, and I would get the kind with the two female ends. And uh, they're pretty cheap, guys. You can usually get a, a big bundle of them for, you know, five, ten bucks, something like that. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of part of the price of doing business when you're working on electronics projects. You're going to need that stuff. For this, guys, you don't really need a breadboard. I mean, there's people that will tell you always use a breadboard. I'm not one of them. Um, this is a really simple project to, to wire, so uh, my nickel's worth is don't bother with a breadboard. But it's up to you. If you want a breadboard, use a breadboard. I have no, uh, I have no skin in that game other than you do what you want to do. I'll do what I want to do. And then, uh, yeah. So you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna scab it together according to my little circuit diagram. Then you're gonna wanna hook it up to your computer. And uh, I always start with a, with a blink with a really simple blink uh, sketch and upload that to the Arduino to make sure it's working because uh, you know there's nothing worse and you think it's working and it's not working and you do a whole bunch of poking around and then you discover that you didn't do the basics 
So I always upload the blink sketch, and all that does is it makes the LED on the Arduino blink on and off, so you can see if it's working. And then uh, once you got that going, guys, you you get everything uh, wired up. You uh, you load the code into your Arduino IDE, the uh, the development uh, tool there, guys. Some people don't like it. I have no major problems with it. Uh, you can download that. It's free. And then you upload the sketch. And uh, with any luck, it should work uh, right out of the box. If not, you'll need to start poking around. And uh, please don't ask me questions in the comments. Um, this is my good deed, posting this, you know, providing the information. If you don't have the, uh, the wherewithal to figure it out, uh, find somebody you know up close and personal, harass them. If you're really, really desperate, you can fire a question at me, but please, for the love of God, Google it first. So, anyways, once you get her going, guys, it's uh, it's really simple. It just uh, shows really basic information, and uh, yeah, it seems to work really well. I've had it out twice now, and that's uh, yeah, working good. So, there you go. One thing I was going to mention, I was actually going to use the ESP8266 uh, board because it has Wi-Fi built right onto it. I had problems, guys. I got the uh, the display working, no problem, but I could not, for the life of me, get that board to read the GPS, and I have no idea why. It doesn't make any sense to me why it would not work. Uh, it's a real head-scratcher, guys. I gave up. I just had enough. It works. It worked off the Arduino so easy that uh, it made my head spin. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why the uh, the SP8266 does not like the GPS. There's something funny going on, guys. I don't know what it is. And uh, so, by all means, if you want uh, to potentially have uh, some Wi-Fi connectivity to get that off of this thing uh, down the road or to control it. Try out that 8266 and let me know how you got it working because uh, I crashed and burned on that one, guys. At some point down the road here, I, I think I might try again. And uh, what I'll do is uh, is probably I have another one kicking around. The one I was using seems to work. I mean, I hooked up some stuff to it and it worked fine. It just the GPS is unhappy. So, I, I mean, I think that board is working properly, but... Part of me's going. Eh, I don't know. I've used it for a bunch of stuff. Maybe I maybe I did did some hurt to it. I don't, I don't know. So I'm thinking use. Uh, I have another one in the in the bag still, and uh, maybe I'll get that one fired up and give it a try with this and, and see if it it can read the GPS. And if it does, well then we know I I uh, I made a boo boo somewhere along the way. But uh, as you can see, uh, it works just fine. It's uh, clearly that board is unhappy in some way. So. Anyways, this is just off of the Arduino uh, Nano. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get this done, guys. All you need is uh, is uh, four data pins. So uh, you can use uh, you can actually use uh, oh brain cramp. You can also use guys the AT Tiny 85. Um, it's a real simple board that uh, some guys uh, put up on uh, Kickstarter uh, quite some time ago. They're really cheap. You can get five of them for like 10 or 15 bucks. And it's got uh, enough pinouts to run this. So, uh, so you can use one of those too. They're super small guys. Wait, it's like a, it's like a, this, this Arduino goes from all the way from this end, from, uh, from the end of the connector to right about, uh, right about there guys. I can't see it too well, but it goes, it goes right to the edge. And that, that, uh, that AT, AT tiny uh, 85 version is, uh, it only goes to about there. So it's it's super small, guys. Really little. I was thinking about using one of those, and I uh, I was frustrated with the 8266 not working. So it worked fine with this board. I didn't feel like uh, I didn't feel like inflicting any more misery on myself, so I didn't. Yeah, there you go. Like I said, I hope you uh, get some use out of this, and it works for you. And if nothing else, uh, this has taught you that you can build a GPS speed logger for $20 instead of buying one for uh, $80 or $100. So there you go. Drive to wrench or wrench to drive.